And now the video you all have been waiting for, the conclusion to the 90 day challenge of switching from Ubiquiti over to TP-Link Omada. My experience overall has been fine. I know for a lot of you that's gonna be hard to hear because of how, whatever opinions and experiences you have, but in my experience, in my home lab, it's been fine. I have no major complaints. There's nothing that I saw that I would say is a major showstopper that should prevent anyone out there from getting their hardware. But that being said, there may be things that do exist that I didn't experience. So just make sure as always with any tool to do your research and fully understand what you're purchasing before committing to anything specifically. That's probably the best advice I can give you about anything. And as far as my experience with TP-Link goes, it is what it is, it was fine. With that being said, however, there are some things that I would like to see improved. The first of which is better GOIP blocking. While we do have a very flexible option available to us, I think a lot of users would prefer the option to just select an entire country and be done with it versus manually inputting all of the IP addresses of a specific country. That's a big improvement right there that I can think of. The second of which is doing whatever it takes to get a hardware controller to feel faster. Even if that drives up the cost a little bit or maybe even a lot of bit of the hardware controllers. I'm not sure if it's a software problem that's making the OC200 specifically feel slow. And if it is, buy a better CPU, put it in there, more RAM, whatever it takes, it's got to feel faster. On hold. Objective reached. The other thing I noticed is that there seems to be a real lack of PoE router options. And what I mean by that is we need routers that can supply PoE power to our OC200s or really any PoE hardware controller because that would really give us more flexibility in terms of what we actually want to have on our network. Maybe a lot of users don't need a PoE switch. And yeah, I can plug in the OC200 to power, but what if my PDU is full? It's just easier and more flexible if you have a router that also provides at least one PoE output or maybe even some sort of USB pass-through power to the hardware controller. That would be pretty cool to see. And the last thing I'd love to see are routers with integrated controllers or at least more options of routers with integrated controllers. It feels a little silly to have a separate device. I totally understand why you might want a separate device because if you're thinking of high availability or resiliency, that is definitely a key factor for having a separate device. However, if we had a fully integrated device, there's nothing stopping us from having a second duplicate device, so a router that can do both the hardware controller and routing and all that other jazz. We could have two of those in high availability mode and you can charge extra money for that, I would think. So I would love to see an option like that available in the future. As far as I can tell, that's not something at all on TP-Link's roadmap, but who knows, maybe they'll watch this video and maybe the engineers will get something like that going. Next up, let's discuss some of my personal observation and quirks, the first of which is with iPhone and MLO connectivity. This does appear to be a specific issue with Apple's iPhone 17 specifically, although I'm pretty sure I observed the same issues on my wife's iPhone 15, as well as on my Mac Mini M4, where the connectivity would just drop and the connection was completely intermittent or unusable, although the Mac Mini M4 had a much more stable connection more often, but it would still have issues when MLO was enabled. And the ultimate fix for me was just to disable MLO for my Apple devices. Now, I believe this is an Apple implementation issue as I've seen online, other people complaining about other manufacturers having issues specifically with iPhone 17 and MLO being enabled to the point where other people were having a separate SSID for with MLO enabled for their other devices. And as far as I can tell, uh, Android doesn't have this issue at all because of course it doesn't. This isn't probably an Apple thing. And when I had an Android device on my network, it also didn't have any issues when MLO was enabled either, at least none that I could tell. With the iPhones, it was pretty much immediate, so I'm sure I would have noticed if there was an issue. Other issues I also observed were related to MLO more than likely, 
and some devices absolutely refuse to join my network with MLO enabled, specifically my car. As, off, as much as I tried to get it to join the network, it just absolutely refused. I could put in my password and then it would just basically fail to authenticate and I couldn't get in. I'm not sure if that's specifically an MLO issue uh, or not, but once it was disabled, I was able to get right back in or I was able to join the network. So again, not entirely sure what was going on there, but that is something I noticed. Moving on to the next part with the Yamato software specifically, I totally bricked my entire network because I misunderstood a, an option of select all. It was not intuitive to me what the select all would actually do. I assumed the select all would select all the ports on my switch, just the ones that were showing, but no, it in fact selected all of the ports on my switch, even the ones I couldn't see. So when I changed the VLANs on my switch to be on a specific VLAN, my entire network got bricked. I couldn't get into the switch and I actually had to console into it to do a factor reset just so I could regain control of it. So I don't know if that's you know a universal thing, but definitely lesson learned there for me. I think that could be improved maybe on TP-Link's part and the Amato software to kind of like make it more intuitive that when you select all, it's gonna select all 16 ports, not just the six or eight or how many ever are shown on the web UI. So uh, that was a fun one. And kind of moving on to the last thing, this again has to do with the speed at which the Amato software works. Uh, once it was all configured and I never went back to it, it wasn't an issue. However, some of those web pages are pretty slow, especially when you don't have any configuration set up yet. And just sitting in there waiting for, you know, tens of seconds, it's not a good feeling, especially when you know there's no ACLs to load or there's no configuration to load and not understanding why it's taking so long to literally load no configuration is kind of a point of concern. And I see this come up a lot online, which leads me back to my original point of things I'd like to see changed where Amada can just, they just, TP-Link just needs to figure out what they need to do hardware wise to make it more snappier. Now, it's not an exclusive problem to Amata. There are totally pages on the Ubiquiti side that take forever to load. It's just a consequence of PCs. I don't think it's too big of a deal. And speaking of not too big of a deal, I also don't think that the boot times is that big of a deal either. I see this complaint all the time and I just don't understand how frequently anyone is rebooting their devices. Now I can understand maybe in an enterprise environment where those boot times are probably a lot more important for SLA agreements or whatever it may be. Uh, but that's when HA should come in. And I don't know if TP-Link has any high availability options available. And again, that leads me back to my original point. We need to have high availability options. But in my personal home experience, it was fine. It's not a big deal. I don't understand why people are powering on and off these devices especially in the home lab environment. Now, finally, for the big question and answer, will I be switching from Ubiquiti over to TP-Link? And I think this is gonna surprise a lot of you, uh, whether, no matter which camp you are in. And you know what? I think I'm gonna stick it out with TP-Link and really give it a go and see how it is for a more long-term experience. I was going to actually switch back to Ubiquiti because I really wanted to use my NVR, or not my NVR, my UDM Pro as an NVR and camera system because uh, it's just a lot easier and works a lot better that way. And obviously all of the stuff was set up, but I'm feeling a little lazy because all the TP-Link stuff is already set up. And honestly, it just works. The Wi-Fi 7 performance is amazing. And if I had Wi-Fi 7 for Ubiquiti, I'm sure it would just be as equally as amazing. But the, anyway, the Wi-Fi 7 coverage is great. I'm really enjoying the Wi-Fi overall, despite having some of those troubles with MLO earlier, which honestly, I don't even think I need anyway. It works perfectly fine as is. But uh, yeah, so that is the conclusion to this 90 day challenge. Let me know what you think in the comments, whether you agree, disagree, your thoughts and opinions, and maybe we can have a follow-up video discussing some of your thoughts and opinions, or maybe there's things that I should specifically look for that might change my mind on TP-Link. I'd be really interested to know what you guys come up with. 
So with all that being said, I wanna thank each and every single one of you for watching, and I will see you all next time. Peace.